Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the most crazy, curious, and coincidental thing. And it happens every summer, about now, this first week in August. I see Trinity members at random places, perhaps walking out in the neighborhood or at the grocery store, or actually just yesterday at Camp Invention, this happened. After the hellos and how are yous, People often say, with heartfelt sincerity, they come up to me and say, I'm sorry. And I'm caught off guard, and I'm like, what are you sorry for? And they say, well, I haven't been to church in a long time. <laughs> Actually, I haven't been to church all summer. And then comes this confession. They say, I really miss church. I really miss seeing all of you people. And time and time again, this confession comes to me. And what I've concluded is that people have a genuine hunger for God. And I'm guessing that you all have a hunger for God also. And that's why you're here. This morning I've shared many hellos and how are yous with all of you as well. Maybe some reintroductions as I'm recently off of sabbatical. But I too must again begin with this message of I'm sorry. Because I confess to you that I have missed church a lot this summer. Specifically this church. Trinity Lutheran Church here in Brainerd, Minnesota. A very, very special place with amazing people. But I too, in my sorrow, I feel a hunger, a hunger to worship Christ in community with you all again. And as they say, absence can make the heart grow fonder with regards to um, maybe missing church. Absence can make the heart grow fonder. This may be well and true, but in our collective uh, attempt for fondness, let us not make absence a habit, okay? Yes. As brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, we come as hungry beggars who long for bread, the bread, the true bread of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We hunger like our biblical ancestors who wandered in the wilderness, who received blessings from God, and they asked that question, what is it? Ironically, as you remember from the children's sermon, ironically, what is it means manna. And so we wander in our wilderness worlds and we wander in our worlds today, receiving blessings from God, like manna from heaven. And we are perplexed and we're puzzled. And we ask, what is it? Echoing the disciples' words, we cry out, Lord, what sign are you going to give us? What works are you going to perform so that we can believe? Lord, what work are you performing in my life? We're asking this question, what is it? But yet the blessings are all around us. We wander in the wilderness with blessings all around. On our 48 day sabbatical road trip, our Ford Focus broke down twice. The first time it was a crunchy sounding transmission in Kalispell, Montana. <sighs> yes. And uh, 600 miles later, in Hood River, Oregon, it was a broken CV axle joint. Had no clue what that even was before it broke. And so in our wilderness, and in my cluelessness about cars, 
we asked, what is it? And so we counted the costs. We counted the costs that we knew that we could count. Number one, the financial costs. That was kind of spendy. The stress, yes. A uh, <laughs> little bit stressful, major inconvenience. And those lively debates that my wife and I had, whether to buy a new car or to fix the one we have or what to do. And so in our wilderness, we asked, what is it? And in hindsight, it was manna, true bread from heaven. In the form of a tow truck driver who shared his life with us and towed us 200 miles through rush hour traffic in Portland, stop and go traffic, for a very, very slim fraction of the cost that it actually would have cost us. He said, it was 200 mile tow and he said, how does 100 bucks sound? I said, ah, deal. <laughs> and as we made our way into our in, the town where I inter interned in Silverton, Oregon, we saw our church and our car is on the tow truck. And we're driving by the church and he goes, oh, that's your church? We pull into the parking lot. Oh, there's the little pink house where we lived. He drives down in the neighborhood. It was, it was amazing. And he shared his life with us. It was amazing. And at the end of that tow trip, uh, it was full body bear hugs with this guy that we had only known for two hours. And also the blessing of breaking down a block from the transmission shop. That meant I only had to push it a block. <laughs> that was brutal. And the blessings of grandpa and grandma, they happened to be right behind us when our car broke down. It was amazing. And there were many other manna blessings in the midst of our breakdown. But during these breakdowns, I asked, what is it? Lord, give me a sign. And after these breakdowns, I can emphatically tell you that it was manna, true bread, God in our midst. And so true bread comes to us when we, like a broken down car, any make and model, are broken down and are in the wilderness of what to do. We are puzzled, but yet things somehow seem to fit. With true bread, hunger is satisfied and breakdowns become blessings in disguise. And so in preparing for today's message, I've had today's First Communion song totally stuck in my head. And usually when I get a song stuck in my head, it's there all day and it's kind of annoying. But with this, in preparing for today's message, I took it as a Holy Spirit thing. This song, it's... As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill Were gathered into one to become our bread So may all your people from all the ends of earth Be gathered into one in you And so it is, as the song says... We gather this morning as wheat, waving as one in worship, with the seeds of faith pressed and blown. You see the seeds of faith held in our harvester God's hands. And as we wor worship as one, together we are golden, like a waving wheat field in eastern Washington. That's what I'm reminded of. And we gather this morning as one bread, like bread, we are kneaded, and we are pressed, but yet at the same time, later, we are leavened and risen in Christ. And we gather this morning together as hungry beggars who come puzzled by the world and the world's sort of ways we don't understand. And we ask, what is it? But yet in God's time, Everything somehow fits and fills us with manna, true bread. And we gather this morning hungry, but yet we are sent 
filled and satisfied from this one heavenly food. And so, just as Jesus said to his disciples some 2,000 years ago, Jesus says to you this day, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. Amen.